Well, everybody wants to have the yard. That is the uh, envy of the neighborhood. Maybe not so much this time of the year, but there's other things that you can be envious of, like maybe Christmas trees. Uh, Perry's here to talk about uh, uh, Christmas trees, whether it be artificial or, or real. Uh, thanks for coming in again, Perry. Nice to see you. Uh, where do we start? I mean, uh, if you want a fresh cut tree, you've decided to go that route. Where do we start? Yeah, obviously there's uh, a few choices. Usually we'll see uh, you know varieties of fir, balsam fir, Fraser fir. Uh, they're the ones like this. I bought a balsam fir here. They smell great, as you can tell already. Kind of a short needled tree. Uh, looks more like a spruce tree. So again, shorter needles. Or Scots pine, are another really popular one. I'm a big fan of Scots pine too. They tend to have the longer needles on them as well. Just really depends on the look you want. And, and again, obviously once you go the live tree route, uh, you know care is really important when we talk about keeping it looking great through the holidays. A lot of times there's concern concerns about needles dropping, that's really from stuff drying out. So if you can keep it hydrated, it's really important to keep it healthy. Where do you start though with, with respect to water? As soon as you've got the tree and you water it for the first time, how much do you put in? Yeah, the really important thing to understand is as we see here, you've got the stump and so what happens actually, they get transported and it's cold outside, so they freeze, which is great, so it helps them store. But you actually need to cut about you know, three quarters of an inch, maybe about here, a couple centimeters off the end, because the sap actually freezes and it doesn't allow the water to get taken up. So much like a live tree with roots, it's actually gonna suck water up through the tree and actually transpire out the needles. So it's really important the first time that you uh, use hot water, and it can be hot water from the tap, it doesn't have to be boiling hot or anything. That'll help loosen up the sap and allow the water to get to dry in through the tree and so you know even the first uh, 24 hours or so you'll use probably four to five liters on a tree this size of water again hot tap water really important to get it started if you don't do that it's really not going to create that system where it's going to continually transport water through the holidays and then how often should you be watering the tree after that well, it's actually a good question. Typically, uh, you know, about an inch of uh, uh, diameter caliper size. So this one's about a three inch caliper, meaning the diameter of the trunk. So something about this size, maybe six to eight feet, would run three or four liters of water a day. And so it's really important that you pick the proper tree stand when you talk about that in terms of just making it easier from a maintenance perspective. Okay, now, okay, you, we've got the maintenance. Is it really important where you position the tree in the house? Yeah, well, you know, honestly, once you get a tree stand like this one, as I'll show, you know, this is typical. This is kind of the easiest thing where it can actually hold water. This one will hold five liters. And so when you put it, you know, you can put it really anywhere in the house. One of the things we suggest, though, is you try to keep it away from fireplaces, vents, things like that. You know, the, the problem is that they'll actually help the tree sort of uh, hydrate or lose water quicker. And so... You want to make sure that you know it's not drying out too quickly. Again, if the best spot in your home is close to the fireplace and sort of the vibe and look you're going for, that's okay. Just be aware that you might have to add a little bit more water than even we've talked about. Again, just to make sure, because once happens, once you get it started and the water's flowing and you keep it topped up in your reservoir, a downside can be if you let it empty that you'll get kind of an air pocket and it'll be really difficult to get that water going. In fact, you probably won't be able to. And so then you, again, you'll see some needles, you know, drying out and falling off. Maybe this is a question I should have asked right off the top, but uh, when you've decided that you're gonna be getting the natural tree and you go out to buy it, is there a special way that you should be transporting it? Well, a couple of things that are really important. One thing I talked about when you cut, you know, the end of the stump to allow the water to flow, it has to be done within six hours of when you get it in the water. So if you've got a long trip, uh, when you get a new tree, or perhaps you're not gonna be able to set it up for several hours just keep it cold don't cut the stump yet a lot of times we'll cut it for people because they'll be leaving the garden center and going home and you know setting it up right away which is fine um, again we transport it on top of a vehicle you see that pretty commonly yeah or in the truck you want to make sure that the the stump or the trunk is forward it'll help keep the needles from you know getting blown off in the wind and things like that if you can't keep it covered those are really the things to consider that are most important okay now it's all said and done the holiday season is over uh, time to consider recycling your tree yeah 100 percent. i mean the city of edmonton has a great recycling program you can actually put uh, your trees out on the curb uh, January 7th is when they ask for them this year um, and again uh, free they'll come pick them up you don't need to leave them covered if you live in an apartment uh, or a condo complex you can actually take them free of charge to an eco center just after the holidays uh, towards the end and into the new year as well all right thanks Perry we'll see you next time for more great ideas on how to make your yard the showpiece of the neighborhood check out Ellerslie Gift and Garden we've also got the classic landscaper bo both uh, on the corner of Ellerslie Road and Calgary Trail just across the street from each other for more information you can call 780-988-9888 we've also got uh, websites there and uh, Twitter handles as well.